Sometimes you just need to push the panic button. Junior ambassadors first. I sort of uh, tilt my chin up to drop the 10 feet down to how far? It would like if we're be longer than that. How suspended above the ground would we be if we were to just cut a hole in the floor right now? Well, we would have to be cutting through a lot of machinery and outer layers of the ship, right? Or could we find yeah. a, a low-lying window or something? So there are no windows on this level, and the floor is thick with machinery underneath. Okay. If you you could search, it might be quite a bit of cutting, but it's not impossible that you could cut out if you really wanted to. But it might be like cutting through multiple layers. Right. We've only got 15 right. minutes. I consult my data pad and decide that the escape pods are closer. Are they? Are they? Or actually, Do wait, we have no, to no, do no, a no. Check? Okay. Do we have to flip a light I side really point? like the idea of there being a hatch with the like the blow up ramp like you'd have on an airplane, like an emergency slide out of the ship. I Can don't think that, that, that exists on this ship, <laughs> but because. You know, if it it's not ever meant to crash, and you know, neither is a plane. But if it does crash, it's mostly like front door access, or there's probably. I'm just thinking of fire safety protocols. They're, they're probably they should be, those. but I don't. I I think in the Star Wars universe there is not okay. any kind of fire safety emergency, other than escape pods. All right. Is there a? I mean, is it, are escape pods what we should be concentrating on, or is there a side hatch, back hatch, any kind of? But I guess suppose any sort of obvious entryway would already be crowded with clones. The whole ship might be crowded with clones, as far as you know. Mark, should I flip a light side point to make the escape pods closer? Probably. Okay. Does that work? I flip a de point. Works for me. It's flipped. Okay. Hopefully so... we're near enough toward the end that I don't have to worry about how low we are on light side points. You you spoke with Gonki. The ship's going to blow. You head up through the lift, and it takes you through the large hangar. You can tell that whatever Gonki has, uh, Gunky has done is not only going to blow up the ship, but something else has changed. As you look through the hangar, you see many clones, and these clones are now fighting many of the battle droids that on your way down were inert not moving Ooh, are there some of those uh walkie ship droids too i forget what they're called vulture oh, yeah. droids maybe yeah a vulture droid uh picks off a few clones in quick succession before a clone fires a rocket that travels far distance through this indoor hangar and explodes on this vulture droid you really f see the Clone War in front of the two of you. This is maybe a vision that TC has seen in other droids' memories, but never seen through his own photoreceptors. You reach a floor just above this hangar. And it's supposed to be over. They declared the war over yesterday. That's not how wars work. You reach the floor above, and you're in a slightly smaller chamber. And with your data pad readouts, you know that there are some escape pods a far ways down the hall towards the center of the ship back where the bridge was. And I think you both head that direction. Yep, we both head that direction. There's blaster fire on your way there and bolts, blue bolts, red bolts ping around you. You see a human that you saw earlier the human that she carried a heavy clone blaster and she's ducked behind a metal crate and as you're approaching she offers some cover fire for you and as you get behind the cover she says <laughs> glad to see you guys are okay um i i know what i know what's going on i talked to gunky we all have to get off this ship immediately What's, what's the best way to do that? Well, a couple of people tried one of these pods earlier. I, you know, taking off from one of these on planet, really hard to say whether it's going to be a success or not. You could take off, you could crash right into a building. I, I don't know, but I guess it's better than 
facing down these blasters or sitting here until Armageddon. This human with the large blaster rifle says, you know what? I'm not going out this way. Let's do this. She backs up and hits a button from behind her with her fist and a oval door opens. TC says, junior ambassadors first. Gestures. What's beyond the oval door? Uh, Beyond the oval door is a very small pod-like room, kind of an oval shape, with a couple of seats and some seat belts and one glass window that faces out into Coruscant. And what did you say, TC? Junior ambassadors first. Exactly. And I lead the way into the escape pod, uh, but making sure he follows. I'm very tempted to just throw that deck, the tape, out. Uh... I guess hall. you, I mean, at, if why don't I just shoot it with my new blaster then if we're just going to destroy it? Do we want the information or do we not? TC-44 follows. With the cassette? And hands the data cassette to Smisk. It's a big step. It's glaring with it's big a, it's circle a big step eyes. forward for us, TC. I have nothing to say to you, Junior Ambassador Smisk. <laughs> and, and it's... As he moves his head, kind of, it's kind of, it's like a little bit, okay, fine. It's not flopping around on his shoulder, but it's, it's like a little bit wibbly wobbly, like a, like a bobblehead type of, (laughs) and it's just, it just won't stay upright. And I, it's no great loss to me. So I sit in my seat and activate the pod and the doors his clothes behind us. TC sits as far away from <laughs> Smisk as possible, strapping in. I hope you know how to fly this thing. I said, of course, naturally. And I have not established at this point whether or not I have piloting skills, but you, do I have piloting you skills? TC's better at it than you are. Well, does TC want to do it? Or should we just rely on something of a foolproof nature of escape pods where, I mean, I assume... People who are not pilots can escape and escape pods, right? TC says, I hope you know how to fly this thing. Smith looks confidently hesitant, and TC turns to the Coruscant resident with the giant blaster, hoping that she knows how to fly this thing. Are there more seats available? How many seats are there? There are five seats. And due to your... Yeah, you're, you're getting off immediately. I think that the human gestures to other folk onto the pod. So it's full now. Mm -hmm. Does anyone know how to actually fly? Or are we just hitting the big red escape button? And this human tells you, you don't fly these things, you shoot them into space. And that's what we're going to (laughs) do. Great. And (laughs) Sounds good. Oh no, are we actually going Uh, up into space? Maybe that's our next mission, Mark. No, (laughs) no, no. no. You you shoot them into space when you're in space. When you're on the when you're on when you're on planet, you just shoot them. So, <laughs> and that's what we're gonna do. Is everybody strapped in? Yes. And she pulls up a panel and smashes a button, and this pod goes shooting into Coruscant. And I w- want to roll. To see how you are gonna okay. handle the first impact. of all, let me let me describe this. We are the the pinball at the very start of the pinball machine, and the launch is is the the mm-hmm. spring loaded uh, trigger that you pull back, and it just shoots it right around. And this is Coruscant, so it's like obstacles mm-hmm. everywhere, and we're ricocheting. We're pinballing off of everything. But there's shock absorption in the Um, escape pods. There would have to be. definitely shock absorbance in the escape pod. But I don't (laughs) think you're going to do as much ricocheting as you're going to (laughs) do more smashing. You're going to be more like a a wrecking ball (laughs) flying through Coruscant. I'd like to request a coordination check to hold on to my spot. You want to do a coordination check instead of a resilience check? Yep. Why do you want to hold on to your spot? (laughs) Just to to hold myself in in place. Okay. Yeah, this could be this could be a bad landing. So I don't know if Smisk has any other way they want to approach. I have a fair amount of resilience as far as I mean, it's I've got a yellow and two green, which is probably as good as I'm going to get. 
Unless I can roll for... Yeah, I think that's great. Think that's probably the best okay. option. I want you both to do a roll. Resilience, first misc, and coordination for TC. Mm -hmm. I'm flipping. We're going to make Twice. this a average check, but I'm... What's that? Twice? You're flipping for each of us? Oh, do I have to flip twice for both of you? Yeah, there's two of us. That's two red dice. It's yeah. two chances of despairs. Okay, fine. Okay, fine. <laughs> uh, I have so many dark side points. So I'm going to flip twice. Okay. So you're going to roll a purple and a red. TC, you're using a light side? Yeah. Against my dark side? It's available. You're, you're like grabbing that and you're grabbing, not even... Grabbing gonna, it hard. Yeah. You're not I don't have do, anything in my hands share anymore. That with your, you're not going to share that with your teammate, Smith, who could actually lose their hands smiths can grow it back <laughs> i love what i just rolled which is a success a triumph two threats okay before you say anything let's see Oops. smiths roll so it's resilience plus a purple a red and anything else okay that's it <laughs> how do you triumph Whoa. and despair this is great wow yeah, this is going to be this. We have two so triumphs between us, and one we've despair. Got, yeah, two successes, two triumphs, two threats, and one despair. Okay, so I think that the two of you are going to can kind of narratively. I don't know. I don't know how, how we narratively describe two triumphs, but I'll take care of the despair for you. Um, I would like so the pod just shoots out of this the back of the ship and uh makes this like this arc through the air and just smashes right into the side of an abandoned building and there's nobody inside it and it just like smashes through the wall skids on the floor of this like warehouse space maybe a, like an unused office space taking out pillar after pillar after pillar which slowly slows it down one step at a time until it gets to the other side where the window breaks and it leans out just a little bit creaks and comes to a stop on the inside of this this office building what do you think of that i love it so my triumph was that the place was abandoned that it smashed into so nikki you also got a triumph so you, if there's something you like really good, you want to happen, is that proper English? If there's something really great that you would like to happen, um, yeah, it can happen regarding your escape. Do I take uh, two strain for those two threats mm. or do you have something else in mind? I think strain would be appropriate for what's going on. His servos creak as he's, his metal fingers hold tight to the edge of his seat. Meanwhile, I'm tightly gripping the arms of my seat. And I mean, you, you used your triumph to have us come to a stop, right? Or did you? My triumph made um, the place abandoned. Okay. Well, but we're kind of teetering on the edge. <laughs> my triumph is we stopped teetering. We roll gently back to safety a little bit. <laughs> They're sort of like, cone shape so it sort oh, right. of rolls <laughs> so it, I was imagining more of a sphere okay just so a it, little bit it rolls a little bit to the side uh-huh it faces further into the building yeah yeah I guess that's my triumph is that we back it we back away almost, from the precipice that almost feels like a two triumph <laughs> like necessary <laughs> escape because it's so crazy <laughs> yep so I like it what do you got for that despair as we boy psh, it's going to be real the, sad, Mark. We hit the door and the iris opens. And three of the ship's passengers step out of the pod with you. The human who you've had a few interactions with says, Wow, I can't believe what just happened. I, I'm, I'm reeling from this. This has been one of the most intense days of my life. I mean, thanks for trying. Thanks for whatever you've done. I wish that I wish this hadn't been such a difficult, hopeless experience for us and the future of our what we're trying to do here, but at least we're alive. TC puts a hand on her shoulder. While you're still alive, there is still hope. Smith scrolls her eyes. If you... I don't know if we'll ever meet again, but my name is Jalshai, 
and I just I hope that what we've done here wasn't wasn't a complete waste of time and that we've done some good for this galaxy and its future though at this time it feels hopeless but thank you and as she finishes that sentence my despair is that the ship explodes and the ship explodes with ferocity this building is shaken to its core all of the windows are blown out and shrapnel kind of flies all around you and i think the building might be on the verge of collapse already abandoned and now weakened by this explosion and i think that also the pot falls out the window now (laughs) (laughs) so the ground shakes and the pod slowly starts creaking towards that window and i think as like the pillars came down when it came through it knocked down these pillars and so the ceiling starts cracking down and we start running towards one of the corners of the building and one of the the stairwells if there are any Mm -hmm. yeah there's a old-fashioned stairwell yeah and tc's still carrying his cassette tape like a no we gave it to you oh that's right i'm sorry i'm i i have the cassette tape do a nice thing and you forget i know (laughs) well you know i just get i did just get flung through the air like a slingshot and put through a building that is now collapsing around me i'm sorry about my manners well i'm i'm running along and i'm i've got my i'm swinging my my cassette cartridge like like a shopping bag and we're we're running we're running we're running for maybe there's a ramp that connects (laughs) the building to another one a it's in way? slow motion and mm-hmm. like bits of the ceiling are falling down and glass windows are blowing out as more parts of the the ship explode. Mm-hmm. There's like a um like a slow-mo ripple effect of windows bursting behind us. <laughs> um do I need a roll for what do you want to roll for? Uh an escape from the building roll. I think are we you just gonna do die. It. <laughs> we we have to we literally have okay. to live. I th- uh, I don't. I don't need a roll because I don't want to kill any of you. So the building shakes and uh, collapses, and you just make it out as the stru- structural integrity gives, and it collapses to the ground. You see a giant plume of smoke in the distance over Coruscant, one of the biggest that you've seen in the past few days, even. These three people that you've met are there with you as well. They're shaken and and scared and concerned, but they'll live. And so will you. Uh, What do you do now? And what do you do next? What do the two of you do? How do you how do you leave each other in this way? TC says, I'm going home. Where is home for TC44? Are you asking TC44? No, I'm asking you, Mark. It's the clone barracks. Okay. So am I, TC. I hope I never see you again. That's fine. But are you going to say anything to anyone? We shall see. I need to assess things. I still have my blaster. I do not care. (laughs) TC starts walking away. I do that thing where I point my blaster at the back of his head as he's walking away, but then I kind of stop kind of snicker and then I put it down and I holster it again and then I turn around and walk away too TC44 heads back to the clone barracks where he goes inside his closet and attempts to uh, the clones would have would have some sort of uh, repair patches or something or at least a repair kit and he starts to attempt to repair himself while delving into his mind and the information that he got on the ship and he begins to assess his memories and figure out where they came from whether they came from his own personal experiences or whether they are flawed is that a check story no, i think that's, that's just, just story that's all that's it just an an, an ongoing <laughs> 
an ongoing a constant check, check. Mm -hmm. a off-screen ongoing struggle yeah uh -huh. like like most of us uh, figuring out what we are all about in this world a never-ending check and what does smisk do smisk makes her way back to the senate and by the time she gets there all dusty and a little bruised she's come up with a way of convincing everyone there that she had been taking taken hostage by the separatists Penel doesn't really have his doubts I think she's able to convince him well enough that she was there unwillingly at the end she initially had been trying to make it work and then she sort of blames a separatist for not seeing reason and the situation devolved and they weren't really treating her as someone who was trying to negotiate a peaceful solution and frames it as barely escaping with her life and even though it's really the clone troopers and their orders that she's angry at she manages to she doesn't feel great about it but she does place the blame on the people who actually she felt sympathy for and while this sort of not endears her to the empire but manages to convince them that this was a legitimate ordeal that she had and the empire begins to because of this sort of considers her as someone whose loyalties might be at least neutral if not empire maybe leaning towards the empire just because they'll think that she has developed an antipathy for these rebels these people who are trying to flee and take over the ship or escape and and so it, it kind of puts her in a position where she is able to have retain access to her information. But personally, she begins to search for other solutions. Okay. She thinks she can still good, do good in her position. It's basically her reasoning for why she doesn't jump ship right then. And mm -hmm. But she does try to start looking for links. She's still got that cassette and takes a look at the information there before destroying it. Okay. So she doesn't hand the cassette no. over to No, what she does any, is she to Pinnell or anyone. Maybe she could put it on commit as much of it as she dared to an encrypted data pad and destroyed the actual cassette and the story she gave to the Senate was that well obviously it had gone down in flames. Mm hmm From what Smisk can decipher from this this cassette, it is Mostly about its information about a network, a collective of like-minded people, engineers, technicians, scientists that are against, against this new regime. And there's information about plans that they have, locations where they're based, locations where they are going to attack or insurge or alter. This is not a incredibly large group, but a organized and like-minded group. And this information, if given to Pinnell, would possibly be the end of whatever this group is. And you successfully deceive and deny this information to Pinnell. In a debriefing he of a group of officers and senators, he says, Well done. I'm surprised to see that you made it out in one piece. That was quite a violent excursion. Uh, wouldn't have wanted to be there myself, but happy to see that one of us can hold their own, as it were. No thanks to you. Excuse me? Uh, I believe I was... Incredibly helpful. You saw the clones, am I correct? Uh, that was me. Yes. You could have waited, at least until I got off the ship. Those people took me well, hostage. I barely escaped with my life. Maybe when you're executive officer, you'll do things a little <laughs> differently to your ambassador. Maybe now, I will. I'll be on my way. And I, I kind of turn around in a huff and my robes swirl around. And as you do that, a, a senator approaches you one that you have only seen in your vague periphery um what does a senator look like mark he is a falling he has green skin his head is 
shaved and he's got a little ridge going up along the top. In the back, there's a small black and gray ponytail. His robes are golden and purple, but not like the sort of robes you would see on a black sun falling. They're more elegant, less sinister. And the senator says to you, greetings. My name is Relinor Teff, and I overheard your conversation with the with the, uh, what's his, what does he call himself? Officer? Executive? Whatever. <laughs> I call him executive whatever as well. As you should. I feel that we may have a common interest, a common understanding at the very least. If you'd care to chat more about your experience, I'd be happy to listen. And the two of you head off. Thanks for listening to this episode of Coruscant Nights. Coruscant Nights is a production of Nightcast Creative. To find out more about us and our projects, visit nightcastcreative.com. Thanks to Doug and Nikki for joining in this episode. Check the show notes for links to their websites where you can check out their amazing art. And last but not least, don't forget about Donate for Destiny. Influence our destiny pool and make a difference in children's lives. Check out nightcastcreative.com destiny for more info and a link to donate. Have you listened to Fantasy Talk Show yet? Tune in every other week while host Dustin interviews characters from all sorts of fantasy worlds. This month, he's got the trio from the current season of The Other Place as guests. Stay tuned for a trailer of the show, along with previews of Tulana, Takoa, and Roberto's interviews. Hello, and welcome to Fantasy Talk Show, a place where heroes come to tell their stories. Fantasy Talk Show is a bi-weekly podcast where I interview people's tabletop characters in character to learn more about their stories and the worlds in which they live. If you're like me and have an interest in tabletop gaming, fictional characters, creative worlds, and the communities that surround them, then please join me for a new episode every other Monday at FantasyTalkShow.com or wherever you get your podcasts. Talk to you soon! There's necromancers out there that are uh, taking advantage of colonies and uh, communities. Uh, I'm going to do my best to uh, put an end to it. Yeah, yeah, I think, as you said before, your role as conductor, it's you being true to that role. Well, you know, I've been trying. I've been trying. You know, and it's a, it's, it's a lifelong journey to try to figure out how exactly to be a conductor. You know, this all has been passed down from generation to generation, from well, rabbit to bunny, canara to canara. So it sounds like you've done uh, a lot of building yourself. Oh, yes. We are taught very young to, to build. That is our way of life. But I'm a little different. I like building, but that is what is expected of all of us. And that's it. Like, there's really not much room for anything else. But I've always looked out and saw this great, vast world. And I want to know what's out there. What more is there? There has to be something else besides just the ocean and building things and planting trees. But was this the event, or I guess what event kind of put you on this adventurous path? Well, that would be actually what um, what got me on this path in particular, this 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 current, so to speak. We talk about currents a lot, uh, both with our religion and, and with just naturally. It makes more sense to me that way. So I apologize if I'm going to start talking in that kind of metaphor. Oh, I embrace it. Please do. Okay, so we were on a military campaign. My sister and I were in the same regiment, and we were called to help defend against a necromancer 